Right, hello and welcome to this fourth lesson on A Christmas Carol this week. Now, we're focusing very much today on drawing together some of the learning from the last few lessons, rather than doing an extra bit of the text. So to start with, as ever, we have our retrieval quiz. Now, if you do this on a PowerPoint, just simply follow the link in the middle of the slide. If you are, of course, uh, doing on a PDF, if you copy and paste that link into a web browser, that'll take you to that quiz. And if you're on YouTube, simply click on the link in the description below this slide. Now, an overview for today's lesson. Uh, we are very much today looking at applying our understanding. So our challenge is to apply our understanding of Dickens' presentation of characters in A Christmas Carol. So it's a character-driven piece, uh, looking at kind of how, we, how we draw together our ideas. I hope a lot of you will also feel you can push that aspire outcome, which is to evaluate our analysis of Dickens' language and structural choices. And as ever with this idea, it is both evaluating his structural choices and his language, but also evaluating our understanding. So trying to reflect on how well we understand it, how confident we feel with it, that sort of thing. Now, for a starter, we're doing a vocabulary task. So on the left-hand side, we have the list of characters that we've met from the text so far, or at least um, the majority of them. So you have Scrooge, Bob, Fred, Tiny Tim, Marley, Fezzvig, and our three ghosts. Christmas past, present, and yet to come. And on the right-hand side, we have some key vocabulary to do with various aspects to do with the text. As ever, this is not a complete vocabulary list. There'll be other useful words as well. But this is a good starting point. So what I'd like to try and do is try and, if you can, think of three to five words as a minimum that you could apply to each of these characters. So, for example, let's take, um, I don't know, the Ghost of Christmas Past. Let's go for that one. Now, the obvious one to go for is better of the past. And we could go for words like um, history. We could go for memory, recollection, recall, remembrance, cause, reason, root, and origin. In fact, all those sort of apply to that, um, that character. Um, for characters such as, for example, Marley, we could go for selfishness, self-centered, egocentric, greedy, venal, covetous, materialistic, grasping, inquisitive, desirous, and miserly. And that's, that's plenty more than that three to five I've actually asked for. So quick little mind map if you can, each of those characters, three to five words. Um, if you have better words, of course, you can add those as well. Absolutely fine. This is not a complete list, as I've said, but three to five words, each of those characters. And that should take you about five to ten minutes. Shouldn't take very long. If you are working on your book, you can, of course, write on the text itself, if that's useful, or you can write in your notebook or your exercise book, absolutely fine as well. There's no right answer to this, so I'm not going to give feedback. Five to ten minutes, though, and on you go. Now, the next task is to try and write an introduction for today's key question that we're working through. As we know, good essays start with introductions. Uh, it's a good thing to include. And as ever, the importance of them really is to show the person marking your piece of writing where you're going with this. So you set up the key ideas, you set up the thinking process and so on, and you flag up the direction of travel. Right? It also, in a sense, shows the person the quality of writing to expect. It sets the expectation. And a good introduction, I always think, is a bit like a first date. It's that first impression. You walk in the room, there they are. All right? That's the first impression the person reading your piece of writing is going to have of you. So it's worth making it good. Now on the screen, what you've got is you have the frame in the Y box, where it says, of course, the frame. Um, which is, we have this, this writing structure with the gaps you need to try and fill in. In the purple box, there's an example of a good one, uh, based on the character of Fred, of course. And at the bottom of the screen, you have the instructions, where you run through it, you add the character and or the theme you're writing about, and you link it to um, a theme or an angle or way of interpreting it or seeing it. And of course, if you can, you link to this wide idea about the context and these broader themes in the text. Now, the question we're working on today is in the red box. To what extent is Scrooge presented as a character who has been redeemed by the end of stage four? So quite a, an obvious question, really, based on the work we've been doing this week. So try to write an introduction. Use that frame as much as possible. Of course, the character is Scrooge, and the question is flagging up a couple of obvious themes for us about redemption and that kind of idea, and this wider idea about the context as well. This shouldn't take you more than about two, three minutes. Introductions are a really, really quick thing. So write it on the page, um, ideally in your exercise book, your notebook, and don't forget to miss a line afterwards as well. As ever, key thing, don't remember, sorry, don't forget, rather, don't forget not to simply write out the question. That is not what this is asking to do. Try and build it into these broader ideas. As a little heads up, but don't forget, if you're struggling to think of alternative words for things like redeemed and so on, look back at that vocabulary list on the previous slide on the starter, and it gives you some ideas, some alternatives, a few synonyms, a few words in that semantic field. Bit of a heads up, bit of a useful thing to be doing. 
So our next task, of course, is to try and write a series of paragraphs about uh, that question, the extent to which Scrooge is presented as a character. And for at least a minimum of one paragraph, I like about three if you can. Um, each paragraph should take, at this stage, probably about ten minutes, eight to ten minutes roughly, um, if you follow that structure. Um, so in terms of the lesson as a whole, if it is a 45 minute lesson, that should be about right, should take you about half an hour for three. Um, you know, if, you, if you're working with Sullivan, you know, even two in that time is still pretty good. One, I could live with, but it's a little bit minimal, shall we say. So, paragraphing as ever. It's peel paragraphs, we need a point, we need evidence to back it up, don't forget that your point of course is an idea. So the setup here, the frame is in stage, what is the stage you're writing about. Dickens presents Scrooge as, so how is Scrooge presented in there? Then you build in your evidence, uh, which is a quotation from somewhere in the text, and do try to embed that in that sentence. It's clear from whoever's reference to and, and the quotation. Don't forget, you can fiddle the wording a bit to make it fit. That's absolutely fine. It's just a helpful frame. It's not something to be limited or restricted by. So evidence there. Then the explanation and analysis. And that's when you talk about what that evidence shows, why it's good evidence, how it supports your point. And then you go into your analysis bit of it as well. And that's when you talk about you know, the, the words, the feature, you zoom in on a particular word or phrase, and if you can do that double zoom of that second layer of interpretation even better, or that alternative interpretation, do try to get something technical in there, whether it's a metaphor or a simile, or simply what you can infer from that particular word, that's absolutely fine as well. And then we come to that, th that, that fourth part of our RPL structure, which is the link. And that's where you go through either the link from your idea to somewhere else in the text, that's absolutely fine, has this fit within that wider structure, or does it contrast or compare to another point in the text? Absolutely fine with. Or you can link it to the reader's point of view. So as readers, how does that influence or shape how we see the character? And of course, you can go for the idea of the wider context as well. That's absolutely fine as well. So four um, sections in our peel paragraph. You're looking for two to three, ideally, peel paragraphs. One would be acceptable if you, if you really put a lot of work and thought into it. There should be decent, uh, decent paragraphs. Um, an idea, our evidence, okay? Then when you explain it, you analyze it, and the link at the end of those broader ideas, the broader theme, the context, the text as a whole, that kind of thing. Now, just to draw it together a little bit, uh, on the screen, you'll recognize this, we have our success criteria. And these are the things that basically we put into a good paragraph. So when we are writing a paragraph effectively, um, these are the things we should be doing. If you overview things, is it a peel paragraph? Do the sections link together? As a chance for you to reflect on the effectiveness of your own writing. Um, you can, as ever, you can tick equals cross these if you have it in front of you, or you can simply annotate your own writing, absolutely fine, or do a, few, a bit of reflection at the end in terms of what works well and what hasn't gone so well as well. Do, if possible, try and compare this to previous writing. Do you feel this is better or worse than the, the ones you've done before this? Are you improving? What are the things you still feel least confident with? So work through all those different criteria and either on your paragraph, on your piece of writing, or at the end of it, try and write some reflections. Do remember also to write about what's gone well. What are the things you're proud of? What are the things you're doing really, really well? And don't forget also, as ever, if it's a really good piece of writing, send it in for Proud Thursday um, at your academy. Because we love, we love seeing the work that you're doing. And we love seeing how good some of this writing is. And there are some amazing bits of writing out there. So, read through your writing, annotate, reflect, write down your areas that you've done well on, what's gone well, uh, your areas for improvement, your even better ifs, that kind of idea. And do, of course, run through all of those things um, and compare it to previous writing that you have done. Right, and that brings us back to our overview for today. So hopefully all of you will feel you've had a, you know, had a chance to work through that. You've had a chance to apply your understanding of Dickens' presentation of characters in the novel, obviously focusing in particular on the character of Scrooge. But hopefully a lot of you will also feel you've pushed that a bit further in terms of evaluating your analysis of his language and structural choices. And you've also had a chance to reevaluate your understanding and your analysis of those structural choices and that language. Thank you very much for your time today, as ever. Hopefully that's been useful and not too onerous, and I will see you in our next session together. Stay safe, stay well.